Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Epic economic leaders, business leaders, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. A very warm welcome from Malaysia to all the leaders, speakers and participants from the region. I thank all of you for joining us today at the APEC CEO Dialogues 2020. Indeed, Malaysia takes pride in our hosting of APEC this year. Despite the unprecedented challenges that we continue to face, Malaysia remains unwavering in our commitment and resolute in our determination to deliver a successful APEX 2020 for the people of Asia Pacific. This year's theme for the APEX CEO Dialogues is APEX Reimagine Priorities in the Aftermath of COVID-19. I suppose that perhaps given the realities that exist in a COVID-19 world, a reimagined APEC has indeed become somewhat necessary. However, this does not mean that we are now to revisit the very element that make us APEC. In my view, a reimagined APEC will still be defined by the priorities that form the crux of the region at present. These priorities are free and open trade and investment, regional economic integration, as well as economic and technical cooperation. What has and will continue to evolve will be the need to view these priorities through a pair of COVID-19 lenses. <clears throat> Admittedly, the pandemic has had a lasting impact on the way we view trade and economic priorities within Apex. While the core pillars <clears throat> that inform APEC work will likely remain the same, there is now a real and specific necessity to ensure a delicate balance between our health priorities and economic needs. As a grouping whose economies constitute about 60% of the global GDP, APEX assume a central role in spearheading post-pandemic economic recovery. We need to trade and invest our way out of the current economic downturn. <clears throat> we must come together and work constructively towards navigating the region along a path of robust, inclusive and sustainable economic recovery and growth. APEC has always been an effective incubator of ideas, perhaps even a trendsetter of sorts for novel collaborative concepts on areas such as economic and technical cooperation, as well as trade facilitation. Today, as we embrace the new norms brought about by the pandemic, APEC is aptly placed to capitalize on our ability to voluntarily explore initiatives that will hasten the region's recovery. In order to do this, we must work closely with our business communities. As an economic entity, APEX must remain sensitive to the needs of our private sector and continue to cultivate an environment that enhances business confidence. A strong partnership between governments and the private sector is pivotal to enable us to successfully overcome this pandemic and mitigate its consequent economic impact. While the government can continue to undertake measures that preserve an ecosystem oriented towards trade and investment, it is ultimately the drive, the resilience and adaptability of the private sector that will enhance the economic prosperity of APEC. So let me take this opportunity to outline what I believe should be our three key priorities moving forward. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, the first and most important priority is for us to reaffirm our support and commitment 
for the rules-based multilateral trading system. And this is essential for our businesses as market stability and predictability are the central pillars which ensure that trade and investment continue to flow even during times of crisis. A well-functioning dispute settlement mechanism at the World Trade Organization, WTO, which serve as a primary pathway for countries to settle their differences is also critical in this regard. Of similar importance is the need to recommit ourselves to APEC's core and enduring goal of free and open trade and investments in the region. And this is integral to our efforts to rebuild our economies in the aftermath of the pandemic. In this regard, we must take a moment to recognize that free and open trade and investment have indeed resulted in greater prosperity within the Asia-Pacific. However, in acknowledging this, you must also underscore the fact that benefits accruing from trade investment have not permeated across all segments of our society. Even today, there is much room for us to improve the narrative of trade and investment with a view to bring tangible benefits to all our people. It is in this spirit that we hope to implement the APEC post-2020 vision. This vision, which is set to replace the BOGO goals that reach maturity at the end of this year, will guide the work of APEC for decades to come. It would also contain enablers that drive economic growth and prosperity for the region. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, the second priority is to bolster the digital economy, given the pressing need to generate jobs and return our workers to the employment market. Innovation and digitalization are fundamental within this context, as these enablers not only facilitate our efforts to reinvigorate economic activities, but also to safeguard the health and well-being of our people. We must therefore continue to innovate and leverage on new and emerging technologies that enhance productivity and drive development. Today, continuous innovation is beyond mandatory. It is a prerequisite for businesses to remain relevant. Inventive, or at times, Cutting-edge adoptions and application of digital technologies is the very foundation upon which innovative business models are built. And these digital technologies are pivotal in supporting and enhancing the value proposition of businesses and entrepreneurs. The pandemic has shown all of us that technology can step in and sustain communities even when our movement is restricted. However, without sufficient infrastructure and close cooperation between the public and private sector, we run the risk of excluding vulnerable groups due to the lack of access to digital tools. And promoting digital inclusion and narrowing the digital divide by increasing investments in ICT infrastructure for these groups is therefore a must. The third priority is inclusive economic growth. I must stress that economic recovery and subsequently growth should ensure that no one is left behind. We must continue to adopt economic approaches that place a specific emphasis on women and youth, the backbone of the region's economy. The World Bank in a study indicated that a country's income per capita will grow significantly if economic barriers are removed or minimized for women. And this implies the importance for us to acknowledge women's contribution to the economy and how much bigger a role they will play in a more inclusive economy. The youth 
must also not be left behind as we turn our eyes to the future in a post-COVID-19 world. With youth unemployment expected to rise, we must ensure that a younger generation is equipped with the right skills and knowledge that enable them to contribute effectively to the society. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, when the history books are eventually written, future generations will look to us for lessons as to how the world responded to a global emergency. They will ask whether we have indeed pursued everything within our means to overcome possibly the harshest challenge of our times, and whether we found our resolve in our regional solidarity rather than individual solitude. How these questions are ultimately answered is relying upon our responses at present time. With those questions for you to ponder upon, I'm pleased to officiate the APEX CO Dialogues 2020. Thank you.